Good morning and welcome to GMNC. My name is Koli Lemboza and I'll be your anchor this morning. Did you know that today is World Elephant Day? So today we ask you to help and conserve and protect elephants from numerous threats they face. Just a special mention to Performance Coffee, an authorized dealer for Jura Coffee Machines and Salt Rock Coffees, as our morning show coffee sponsors, and Puza Water for our bottled water and keeping us hydrated on our morning show. We have a great lineup for you. In studio, we have Tony Subramani with his daily inspiration. We also have my favorite, Warren Loader from Those of the Middle Aged Man blog, who's going to be telling us his interesting story. We have also Sharon Sinclair for Kondramala um, Business, where she's going to be sharing an overview of her business and her holistic approach on aligning people and businesses to their highest potential. We have also again in studio, um, Balito Scouts, uh, Colin and Wendy Mayer. And also do not forget about our August competition, but we'll talk about that later. And we have our current Miss Balito, um, Paige uh, Johnstone, who's going to be telling us about the rain and how COVID has uh, affected her. Then later on, we'll be having a chat with Haley and Dion with our weather and surf report. So without further ado, let's go straight to it. Tony, good morning. Good morning, sir. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. And yourself? I'm well, thank you. Good so, to be back. Yeah, inspires today. Yes. I want to start off with a quotation this morning. And it says, if you don't heal from what has hurt you, you will bleed on people that didn't cut you. Mm. And I believe that's quite profound. And I want to just share this with the, with the viewers this morning. Yeah. We've all been through traumatic experiences at some stage in our lives. Yep. You know, as, as young people growing up, as adults, as teenagers, we've always experienced some trauma. Mm. It could be through hijacking and housebreaking and rape and you know, all those kinds of, of unpleasant and un, unnecessary uh, inc incidents that we go through. Mm. Nevertheless, I want to encourage the viewers that we need to take time to heal from what we've been through. Yeah. Very often we put that to, to the past, we just say, well, it's, it stays in the past, it's okay, and I can continue living my life as I choose to do so. Yeah. But we carry baggage. Mm -hmm. We carry baggage that is so heavy and it's so unnecessary. Yeah. And we always grow up thinking that we'll get over it someday, it's yeah. okay. Mm -hmm. And that's, we tend to minimize the seriousness of those incidents. Mm -hmm. And what happens is that it just accumulates like layers of an onion. It just continues to accumulate mm -hmm. until you lead it reach a breaking point in yeah. life and that can be quite dangerous and quite fatal as well too yeah. there are ways that people can actually overcome the hurt that they've been through okay. and heal from it and one of it is to actually acknowledge and understand that it is what it is okay it's been traumatic you need to look at the fact that you acknowledge it's there mm -hmm. and you need to take ownership of it okay taking ownership does not mean that the person who incurred the, the hurt and the pain is, is sent, set off lightly and is you know, free from his or her punishment or retribution. Yeah. The fact is you set yourself free when you, when you understand and acknowledge <coughs> excuse me, that that's what's happened to you. Yeah. When you acknowledge it, then you take ownership and when you take ownership, you realize that you can work through it. It's a process. Yeah. The other thing is to look at yourself in understanding that you take control of your life eventually. Mm. Your life no longer lies in the hands of those who, who caused the abuse or created the, the trauma in your life. Yeah. Very often we live our lives as a victim. Mm. You know, we constantly see ourselves as a victim of the traumatic experiences. Mm. And I want to encourage viewers to change that through the process of releasing the pain and the hurt and the suffering. Okay. You become a victor. Mm. And when you become a victor, you don't continue to live in your past mm. like many people do. So, yeah. I also think that it's important to seek professional help. Of course. You know, mm. we, we quite often think that we can manage without the professional, but there are people that are well trained to out there that can help you mm. and take you to the journey of releasing the pain and the agony that you've carried for years. Yeah. Also, be gentle with yourself. Mm. You know, very often we harden ourselves and we continue thinking that, well, that's how life should be. It should be a struggle. It should mm. be a strain. Yeah. It means we've got to get up and roll out and get going with, and it should not be. 
Mm. It should not be. We're fighting a battle and we're constantly in a survival mode. Of course. We just roll out of bed, we get into survival and we want to survive for the day. Yeah. When we get down to bed in the evening, you say, oh, grateful for this bed and you just want to slump into bed as well. Yeah. And it's the same thing that happens on a Friday afternoon. You say, oh, TGIF, thank God it's Friday. And then mm. you just, you chill on a weekend on Monday, you're absolutely, you know, feeling terrible about yeah. the fact that, because you just, living this survival mode all the time and you mm. you great re regretting life mm. you actually regret life and you think you know why am i the one that has to suffer why am i the victim of what has happened mm. and i want to encourage the, the viewers that it, it's not easy what i'm sharing yeah. it's not easy but yeah. it's possible and it's wow. necessary when we make that step, when we take ownership of what we're going through, mm. we pull ourselves away from the outer world and we bring ourselves closer to the inner world. Yeah. The other important message I want to share is, what message are we giving our children? Mm. We're saying to them that it's okay to suffer, it's okay to be a victim. And we're passing those kinds of trends on to our children and our grandchildren. Yeah. And I want to encourage the viewers this morning side to break the cycle. Of course. Seek help, be gentle on yourself and take control of your life eventually. Live as a victor rather than a victim. Mm -hmm. And eventually you're going to give your children a different experience altogether. Wow. So that even if they do go through some traumatic experiences, they're not going to live with the baggage that they have to carry for the rest of their lives. Yeah. You know, children very much mirror the way the parents handle situations. Mm. And how many parents today are actually carrying the baggage of their past yeah. and their children are actually having to wait, carry that weight as well. Yeah. Which is not fair, it's unnecessary and it is something that can be worked through. Mm. But the journey that I'm talking about is not one, it's not a quick fix. It's yeah. not like poof, yes, it's done. Yeah. It's work in progress, it mm. takes time. Mm. But taking time is also an enjoyable journey along this pathway as well too. The life is meant to be one of joy, one of bliss, and one of happiness and tranquility. Wow. And that's where we're going to find it when we let go and start looking at ourselves seriously. That's wow. my message for today. Well, I like what you had to say because I know a lot of people are going through the most, you know, people are going through depression and it's quite nice to know that you are not alone, you yes. know, and you, there are facilities that you can actually go to, there are people that are trained yes. that you can actually speak to who yeah. can help you carry the burden of life. Yeah. And you know the support is so important. Yeah, You've got it support is. groups all over the place. Who mm. people who you know they are members of these groups that have been through these kinds of very very traumatic experiences. Yeah. And many of them have actually stood on, on you know international platforms and shared the experience. True. You know, and when we start to share the experience, we actually offload so much of the burden that mm. we carry it as well. The list, the viewers may know, may not know. I'm a recovering alcoholic. Mm. I've been through some traumatic experiences. Of course. I mean, one of the most traumatic experiences of all for me was at 20 past 2 on a Sunday morning I literally walked out of a bedroom double story building mm. the bedroom in that building mm. and crushed my ankle mm. but the fact about it I worked through the process of letting go yeah that is why today I can sit here and I can talk about it yeah. openly without free feeling and re reliving that that experience that I've yeah. gone through before as well so I want to encourage the viewers to find that support and, and and connect with people that have been through that part of life as well too and who knows, they could be even writing their book one day. That's true. Well, thank you very much, Tony, for your inspiring words. I know that for me, I'm inspired as well for what you're saying. Well, thank you to Tony for that. Coming up after the ad break, we're going to be speaking to Warren Loder with Thoughts from a Middle Aged Man blog, where we are going to be talking forts and farms after this. <laughs> Wij willen de gas en drive focus ons op ons cliënten. Vriendelijke en doeltreffende dienst is wat ons anders voelt. Ons werk is een span met integriteit en weerzichtigheid. Hier biedt ons leente onvergetelijke ervaring en werkt ons met de beste belang van ons leent. Ons lever niet net producten aan ons leente, ons lever ook volledige dienst, besluitend onderdelen en technische ondersteuning.
welcome back to GMNC. And as promised, we have Warren Loder from Thoughts of a Middle Age Man blog. How are you this morning, Warren? Morning. I'm very well, thank you. 100%. So let's talk thoughts and forms. I'm very intrigued for you to tell us more about your blog. Well, this one started off like most of them with an old map. <laughs> <laughs> they always do, they always, always do. Always, Following the, the trail ones. somewhere. Yeah. Mm. No, um, a chap who lives in Benito gave me a whole file of old papers. Okay. And um, I found this map from the Women's Institute from the 1960s. Wow. And um, yeah, it was a really just a hand-drawn map. Mm -hmm. And everything looked muddled up and it didn't look like <laughs> it was meant to be yeah. in the places that it was. Yeah. So after sitting down and, and really studying the map carefully, yeah. um, I sort of put, put things, placed things and put things in the right perspectives. And, um, and then we went out and, and took a look, um, drove around and, and tried to find out where the places were. And, and by reading on a couple of more stories, everything kind of like fell into place. And, mm -hmm. and actually, what when you drive from um, Mklali on the R102, mm. um, which is just um, cane fields now, okay. used to be a thriving community. Oh. And um, to go back and drive through there and, and look and see where houses and hotels and all of those things used to be is quite wow. interesting. Yeah. yeah. So when you say we, uh, who are you specifically talking about when um, you go on your ventures? Tain and Landon. <laughs> your, <kids. laughs> your companions yeah. of life. I've also got another friend, Brandon. He lives in uh, Pine Town and he comes down often. Yeah. And uh, we go out together, yeah. Yeah, so tell us, so you, you found this map and you started, you know, putting everything together. So what did you find? Where did you go? Tell us more about this. Well, story. the most interesting thing was um, the old fort. Um, we've always wanted to know more about the old fort and I had an inclination that the old fort was um, where um, at um, where T Tiffany's area um, is okay but the map put the fort in a totally different area okay um, it put it near Shaka's head oh and that was the confusing part about it and doing some more research we actually came up with answers that said that that whole area around Sharker's Head was called um, Williamstown, oh. and Williamstown was the the suburb that was that was growing and the houses that were being put up. Yeah. And Old Williams was a uh, was the first magistrate of the area, and that's why it became Williamstown. Oh, okay. And on the hill um, was where the original fort was, oh. which was Fort Williams Williamstown, I think it was. Yeah, yeah. And that went up in 1850. But the other fort on the other side of Mplali, yeah. near Mplali village, um, was called Fort Scott. And that was, went up, I think it was about 16 years later. Yeah. So that's where the confusion came in. Okay. Yeah. So it was quite interesting trying to figure everything out, find things out. And, and, and the other confusing thing was there was yeah. a hotel, the Mplali Hotel. Yeah. Tell us more about that. Middle of nowhere, <laughs> um, on the side of the road where the, where the, the highway is now. Uh. And being called Fort, uh, being called um, Mplali Hotel, you would have thought it would be in the Mplali village, but it wasn't. Yeah. And that was owned by Mr. Knox. Oh, yeah. And when you start putting all the names and, and things together, you think, oh, down Salt Rock, there's a, mm. a Knox Road, and there's a this road, and there's Burndale named after mm. Mr. Burn, and, and it kind of like puts everything in perspective after a while. Yeah. So, um, like, for instance, this is not the first time you've actually found a map. So when you find stuff like that, when you find a map, do you, you know, you go and do research on, on the history behind everything or uh, how, how, how does your process, how, how do you do your process of finding out where something is or was, you know? Well, first thing is Google. That's the best thing. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> but there's not very much information on, yeah, yeah, on yeah. that. But um, you'll get one, one or two leads from Google mm. and then from there, um, you can go and read this pa this passage in a book, or mm. go and look on that book, and um, it, it all builds up eventually into a story. Yeah. yeah. So this is basically your hobby that is now like putting you in a situation where you're on the morning show and you're telling us these important stories. Because one thing that I was actually talking when we were talking off air is that you are able to bring the past and the present together. 
So is it, is it more of something that you're still going to continue doing, uh, writing more stories and about what you find? Because it's like you are drawn to all these historical uh, uh, events and stuff. So are you still going to continue? Yeah, no, definitely. It's definitely a hobby. Yeah. Um, people go out surfing and running. And true, true. I go out and <laughs> try and find old things. <laughs> um, yeah, no, definitely something I've done in the past and I'll keep on doing in the future. And I know that you, you always do most of, of your adventures with your kids. And most of the blogs that we've actually spoken about is stuff that you've, you wrote maybe a year ago and stuff like that. Are they still keen even now to go with you? Because you know the behavior of kids. Kids normally change, you know, this year they like this, this year they like that. But do they still find the same enthusiasm as like you do when you find stuff like this? Yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. I mean, even yesterday I said, boys, we're going on Saturday. They go, oh, where are we going to? So, um, yeah, they do. They love it. Um, it's always something new to find. Yeah. And even if they're not interested in, in the story that we're trying to mm. look at, they're always finding something different, yeah. going in the bush, finding insects and climbing up trees. So there's always something for them to do. 100%. Yeah. So you're saying that this weekend, where are you going? Um, well, we found another map <laughs> and like it. it had a, a marker in the middle of nowhere yeah um up near isitabi yeah that was the first american mission yeah. station in um, zululand yeah and that was built in 1836 wow and um, it was burnt down when uh, dengon um, attacked the the boers yes after the battle of blood well during the battle of blood river yeah yeah and there's one grave that was there from the the um, missionary's um, child that was buried there. Mm. So that's what we're going to go and try and find. And we've pretty much pinpointed it on Google on Google Earth now. Wow. So we basically we have to go and drive there and, and look around uh, a 20 square meter radius, and hopefully we'll find something. Well, I can't wait to hear more on that next week. And I promise you, one of the days I'm going to go with you guys because I really find it interesting how you can actually uh, get all the information together so that um, it becomes a story that we can actually tell our viewers about it here. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Maybe you can sit where I am and I'll ask you questions. Then. Yeah, 100%. <laughs> I'll enjoy that. Well, uh, that was Warren Lord uh, with one of his interesting uh, stories from his blog. And after the break, we're going to speak into a very interesting lady. I've got a lot of questions for her. Sharon Sinclair, where she's going to be telling us about her business and how she decided to choose the strategy that she's using to make sure that um, her business uh, thrives into its uh, highest potential. More on that after this. Hi, Belito. I'm Tanya. I'm the lady from So It Seems, Benina in Belito. Find us in Richard Park, right across from the Hirsch. The new shop. It's three times bigger than the old shop. We have lots more fabric, a lot more haberdashery items. If you can't sew, I will teach you how to sew. I have an additional teacher that helps us sew. And we have a fabulous space upstairs. Looking for a banana machine or a banette? I will sort you out with that one. In this little area, we do everything. We service the sewing machine, we service the overlocker. We fix it up for you. Within a week, you'll have it back. While you go through the pattern books, we have a coffee shop in-house called Buttonless Coffee. You can have a coffee or a snack to eat while you do your pattern searching, fabric searching or sewing upstairs with us. See you soon!
welcome back to GMNC. My name is Tolle Mboza and I'll be with you until 7 o'clock. And as promised, we have Sharon Sinclair for Kanjumala. Her business is, wow, I'm, I'm very excited to be speaking to this exceptional woman. I love the fact that she has a whole new way of actually doing her business. And this is what I got. You know, when you're presenting, get gifts like this. So don't be jealous, eh? <laughs> <laughs> Hello, Sharon, how are you? You're fabulous and you, sir. Good, good. So please tell us more about yourself for people who don't know you. Well, I think let's start off with um, my business card. So okay. choose a, a card there. Any. Any card. Okay, let me choose this one. And then just read your little message there. Um, okay, all right. What do I value the most in my life? Uh, what do people around me value the most in their life? Okay, yeah, that's what it says. Fabulous. Mm -hmm. so, so it's important for us to understand that our lives are a lot more complicated than just getting up in the mornings and going to work, getting yeah. the paycheck okay. and living these day-to-day -day lives kind of purposeless. Yeah. And so my business is focusing on helping people to find a deeper purpose in life adding more value, adding more meaning to themselves and everybody else that they integrate with on okay. a daily basis. Okay. Be it nature, be it the animals or be it even colleagues in the workspace. Mm. We all won at the end of the day mm. and it is our responsibility from a social point is to positively impact each other. Of course. And so my business is really based around caring for people, mm. offering support, nurturing, but on all levels. So emotionally, mentally, and especially around the business because our business is important. It's yeah. important for our economy. Yeah. It's important to put food on the table, yeah. but it's also important to nourish our children with good business acumen to yeah. help them for the future. Okay. And I think the future is entrepreneurship. That's yeah. definitely the way to go. I, I agree with you 100%. So when you say uh, holistically, what do you mean? You know, just explain that part to me. Well, even with my business cards, I use mm. color, for example. Okay. So, and I look at your outfit as well. It's also colorful and it's radiant. Yes. It, color is the highest vibration on the planet. And okay. so psychologically, we look at color and we we'll automatically feel better. Mm. And so I tested that because I thought this is crazy. Yeah. And so many, many years ago, when I went through a bit of depression, okay. I wore mostly black. Mm. So that was the color I wore, from oh, yeah. head to toe black. I even mm. dyed my hair like a black color, etc. Yes. And it just helped me to even feel more depressed. And mm. so what I tried to experiment with is I started to wear different colors. Yeah. And I noticed how psychologically and emotionally it just made me feel so much better instantly. Yeah. And so I use color a lot. Mm. Um, so color in your, in your home, color in your offices, mm. to start to shift the way that you perceive yourself, perceive your day, etc. So mm. color is one of the tools that I use. I use a lot of um, neuroscience, okay. um, mindset. Um, wow. Mindset is very important. So our perception okay. around things um, dictates how the end result is going to be. Mm. And so it's important for us to look at a situation from a fresh perspective yeah. and not look at it from the reality of what it is. Mm. So when we look at, for example, somebody that's looking at their business and it's not doing financially well, yeah. when you're looking at the business and you're saying, oh, my business is not doing well, yeah. your business is not going to do well. Yeah. So you're approaching it from that negative perspective. Mm. And so we've got to shift that mindset to see it from the potential and start focusing on what are the solutions, what are the alternatives, mm. you know, let's be proactive, let's be innovative, let's be creative mm. on finding solutions on how to get us from this not so good space to a much better space. Um, wow. So a lot of mindset shifting as well. Um, I use a lot of emotional techniques as well. So I'm yeah. also a qualified life alignment practitioner. Okay. Uh, so I work a lot on the emotion, how the emotion acts in the body. Mm. I ha also am a, um, a life alignment organizational consultant. Mm -hmm. So I have a look at what are the emotions within the business space. Mm. And so one of the favorite things that I love to do is a business heart alignment. Okay. And so often people think, oh, my business is just a building. It's just a structure, etc. Yeah. But our building, and all of that, our business is a living organism. Yeah. Exactly like our human body. Yeah, yeah. It's got a heart, it's got lungs, it's got all these things that yeah. need to function mm. in cohesiveness with each other. Mm. And so often I'll go into a business and I will find out what is the heartbeat of the business. Ooh. And and it blows people away because they always thought it was just a building concrete yeah and in actual fact it's a living organism and it has feelings yeah it has a purpose yeah and and so people get fascinated and just as soon as you start to shift that heartbeat of an organization mm. 
the business moves from that negative space to a more positive space so that it can support the people within the organization to grow positively forward. Well, I won't lie to you, I love your approach because I think that for a business to be able to, to make that decision and say, we're going to hire you, mm. to actually come through so that you guys, they can get the assistance that they need, that is like an improvement right there on its own. And you are actually right because I remember before I started doing this, I was doing a job that I didn't like right. and my color was black. Oh, yes. everything was black lipstick <laughs> everything was black and ever since I've shifted away because I wanted to know, to have solutions I shifted away said and I said what am I good at what can I do besides this yes. I may be good at it but it's not something that I want to wake up and do all for the rest of my life kind of situation Absolutely. but now as soon as I shifted Hence the color. Now it makes sense, you know, it's very exciting. And I, when I was going through uh, doing my research, I saw a lot of people that you were actually from the business that businesses that you've actually approached. Everybody is smiling. You know, you can see, you, you can feel the message that you're actually trying to convey for someone who's looking to find out more about what you do. And I think that you're doing an exceptional job because, you know, when there is color, there is life. When there's life, there's positivity. Absolutely. And for businesses to actually get to that. So what has been your, your favorite one whereby a business said, wow, you know, I'm sure you have a, 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 a case whereby you, when you got there, things were looking very bleak. And by the time you left, people were like, yay. <laughs> well, I don't think there's, there's one that's actually more than the other. Yeah, because, of course. Because there's of course. always that moment. Yeah. And I think this is what inspires me mm. to think I used to be a financial manager. And just doing accounts all just, the time. Yes. Oh, I, I would die. I would be dead by now. Um, so I really love to see that shift when people look at their business and they go, oh my word, yes, hope. Yeah. Oh, well, I can actually do this. Yeah. Because remember that they have the tools and, and the answers to all their challenges. It's right there. I'm just helping them to tweak it a little bit so that they can actually see that. But there is one that really stands out for me a mm. couple of years back, and I still work cl quite closely with them, mm. um, Mark Gamble from Aspire Youth. Okay. And they, his organization helps a lot of uh, black entrepreneurs mm. to establish their businesses, etc. Yeah. And um, he's so passionate about his business, and uh, a colleague of mine said, no, go and see Sharon. Yeah. And uh, we still met at a, at a hotel in Cape Town, yeah. and um, he was just so, he just, it was no hope. Yeah. And we, we had probably about a four hour session, it was quite an intense session. I'm sure. And, and Mark just, he was just like over the moon afterwards and because yeah. and he knew this was his passion, the, yeah. he knew this was his purpose, he had to do this. Yeah. And he had so much um, positivity and oh. enthusiasm for the business and within the first week he got a massive funding for, for his project. Um, and Aspire Youth still goes. I mean, I just had a, a session with one of the, the ladies, Rosalind, um, yeah. day before yesterday. Yeah. And they are thriving because he believes and he's constantly working on that yeah. the mindset. And he, whatever we've passed on from the session, he passes on to his, his entrepreneurs wow. as well. And that always inspires me. You know, when, when somebody uh, is in that negative space or just despondent about their business yeah. and they see that you know what I actually can do this and it's not going to cost me a lot of money yeah. it's not going to be exceptionally hard work mm. all I need to do is these few little tweaks and the consistency of that wow. and the big thing is the belief in your dream that I think is important well before we actually close the interview it's so interesting and I know you'll be back here again which is fantastic people need to learn more about the services that you provide but for people who are looking to actually uh, hire you to to actually assist where can they get you on your socials the number that you have email address or something yes um, on my my website my mm -hmm. website is www.chandramala.com mm -hmm. and then also they can contact me on my cell phone which is 074 or they can email me at Sharon at Chandramala.com. Well, Sharon, it was an absolute honor and pleasure. And I'm glad that we're going to be seeing more of each other. And after the break, we're going to be speaking to uh, Balito Scars, Colin and Wendy after the break. <laughs> Hi guys, Jason here from Chapman Building. 
Looking forward to introducing a new 13 episode series called Under Construction with Chapman Building. We will be covering various aspects of the building industry and our business to educate and help Belita residents understand more about the building industry. At Tina Teen Scrape Proofs Belita, we offer an array of convenient services for our clients. With an in-store, fully operational business center. All under one roof, T19 Scrive Proof Dispolito is fully stocked with all your leading stationary brands. Proudly Belito for Belito. Welcome back to GMNC. And as promised, we have in studio Belito Scouts, Colin and Wendy. Hello. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. How are you guys doing? Yeah. All good. Thank you so much for having us on your show. It is fantastic. And I was so excited when I actually heard that you guys were coming because I always wanted to be a scout, you know. And I come from East, the Eastern Cape and we never had opportunities like this, you know. So I'm very glad that you guys came through and you're going to be telling everybody what, about, what uh, your business is all about. So in a nutshell, what do you guys do? So a quick, a quick background is yeah. that... Um, uh, Scouts in South Africa is actually the, the largest youth organization in the country. So yeah. there's about 190,000 youths within South Africa currently um, participating in through the various Scouts activities. Mm -hmm. So it actually caters for kids from, they've started a Meerkat, which is now a, so Meerkat Den, which is ages um, 5 to 6. Mm -hmm. um, then you've got Cubs, which is pretty much ages 6 to about 11, or, okay. to, or sorry, to about 10, yeah, 7 yeah. to 11, oh, sorry, 7 to about 10, mm -hmm. and when it, by, the turn, by the time they turn 11, they, uh, they can move it through to Scouts, and Scouts run through from 11 to 17, Wow! and even once they're um, past that, that teenage, um, and they're into the uh, young adults group, there's the Rovers, the Rovers run from from about 18 to about the age of 30. Wow, that's cool. So a, lot of, a lot of children, they found a lot of children and um, once they've, they've bonded for so many years to doing scouts and doing all the various activities they're doing and through various um, charities and environmental things they're working on, yeah. they find it difficult to, they want to carry it through to the young adult. They've still got lots of friends that they run through with a lot of their um, activities. So they pretty much run on their own. Mm. Um, but in Belize Scouts, we're only, we're only four years old. So wow. we currently only run the Cubs and the Scouts groups. Okay. So in the past, uh, for some people who used to be in Scouts, they used, also used to be uh, guides, which were for girls, yes. and scouts were for boys. Yeah. That's now joined in, in about 2000. It's joined to boys and girls all in the same group. Yes. And, and of the children that are in scouts in South Africa, it's, it's about 48% are girls and 52% yes. are, are boys. Yes, I wanted to touch on that, Wendy, as well with you. Um, is that um, my knowledge of scouts back in the day when I used to watch TV and I'll be like, okay, a scouts was mostly for boys. That was. Yes, yes. yes. So um, I, I see now, even when I was uh, doing my investigations with you guys, it's like it's integrated now. You know, you have girls, you have boys. How is that? That's the skills are pretty much girls and boys can do it. So mm. I mean, out there, I mean, our girls actually, most of them are actually more, how can, what's the word to use? Some of them are stronger than the boys. Yeah. They learn quicker, like learning your knots, mm. uh, making your fires. <laughs> I mean, they love it. So, I mean, yeah. I, I run the Cup side, yeah. which is the younger group from 7 to 11. To 11, yeah. And just to watch the little ones and just even to learn to strike a match. Wow. It, they, it's, yeah, it's amazing. And Yeah, so tell us, guys, about the activities that these kids go through, you know. Um, it's very interesting because when I think of scouts, you know, I love the uniform you know everybody looking good you know uh, what exactly do you guys do there so um, 
there's actually quite a um, formal program they run through. Okay. So, and it's catches for all the, the age they are at that, at that time. Yeah. It also catches for what kids are interested at, at that age. Mm. So at, at, at Cubs, they might be running a, a, um, specific tasks and things through every, every week that we're going to um, things that they don't often get a chance to do at home, but yeah. it's, um, you know, giving a chance to like to find themselves or go camping or to tie knots yeah. and things like that. With, with the scouts, um, you also got, there's a very structured uh, plan in terms of, like a, there's like a map reading, there's camping, there's pioneering, oh. there's uh, backwoodsmanship, there's um, a lot of first aid and, and um, safety type things too. Yes. And then also there's a strong environmental focus Ooh. and also a strong social um, contribution yes. development as well. Yeah. So, and through all the ages from, from so in Scouts specifically, it's from 11 to um, by the time they're 17, where yeah. they can be. The highest level you can achieve is actually to become a, a Springbok guy. So okay. you can actually become a Springbok. Yeah. It's a very rare accolade for um, for somebody to make it all the way through to become a Springbok. Yeah. Um, but there's a lot of famous people who have become. Springboks, or, or in, in America they call it Eagle Scouts. Oh, yes, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, I guess. So, for instance, um, you know, Neil Armstrong, or uh, Bear Grylls, or um, Steven Spielberg, or Harrison Ford, or um, uh, um, Michael Jordan, all these yeah. guys, they yeah. were all scouts yeah. at some stage in their lives. And, um, and a lot of uh, American presidents were also all scouts. So they all come from a strong foundation of leadership mm -hmm. um, and and working as a team. That, that's the main premise as well. Yeah, of very yeah and yeah. you know, you guys offer a lot of skills development. I like that, yeah. you know, that's so that kids can actually like uh, channel themselves into, you know. Uh, so I'm sure you've had a, lo a lot of uh, great stories, you know, feedback that you get when the kids actually move on. Definitely. You know, uh, I'm sure they oh, it's just to share one or two stories that you've actually had where some Someone said that you know what if I wasn't a scout this w I wouldn't have been this person you know yes well obviously from our side our cup motto is do your best mm. obviously because of the age group and I've had quite a few cubs actually who mm. parents have come back and it's like wow mm. like my, my kid has he's changed he's learned so much different things that he would never learn at home yeah you know from I say trails following trails in the forest they learn compass work they Life learn skills. how to make collect their own kindle for a fire yeah so yeah they learn so much and by the time they go to scouts they they actually teach the, the scouts some things or two from being a cub yeah which is quite That's an quite amazing cool. achievement to see who happen with the cubs so where are you guys situated where, if someone wants to be part of the scouts <laughs> like they're watching this and they think oh my child will be better suited to be uh, to be a scout so what what's the criteria what do they need to go through so so many years back there was a, there was most scouts in Belita. so there was it is actually a scout hall okay up in towns of the park mm -hmm. um, then over the, no, a couple of years back, it all yeah. it all died away. I think often you find it's, it's run by a couple of individuals because at the end of the day, it's a volunteer organisation. Oh, it's, it's, it's a non-profit. Yeah. It's run totally by volunteers. Yes. So even the cost of um, having a kid there is actually very low because there's yeah. no everything that gets contributed is going directly back to the materials they need yes, um, yes, for yes. What's, whatever course they're running. Mm. Even camps are, are the, the, pretty much the cost price of um, buying the food, etc. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so it's, it's um, often run by volunteers, so you rely on volunteers. And a couple of years back, at, it fell, it fell um, by the wayside. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's now been resurrected, so like I said, we've been uh, going at it for four years. Yes. Um, and so towns and parks where it's all happening. Yes. Um, so yeah. your socials, uh, maybe there's a number that they can call so that if, for instance, they can speak to you guys and maybe get their child in. Um, our Facebook page. Yeah. Um, you find all our info there. Mm -hmm. There's even forms if you want to obviously put your child on. We have a waiting list, I think. Yeah. So comes there's, there's, there's big demand. So there's a bit of a waiting list for, for because there's also uh, we need enough volunteers to maintain yeah, control makes of all kids. Yeah. So there's there's ratios we need to maintain. So as we get more volunteers or yeah. help, we can take on more kids. Okay. Um, at this stage. Uh, we, and we do have a lot of volunteers. There is a slight waiting list for cubs. Yes. The scouts less so, but the scouts are always being fed by cubs that are advancing. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So uh, sense. Scouts are also fully, so at the moment we're also quite full with, with scouts, which is great to see. Yes. Um, yeah. So well, thank you very much for coming, guys. Unfortunately, this is the amount of time we have, yeah, but I sense. know that a lot of parents watching this are saying that you know what, I need to make sure that my child is a scout. So you heard it here, folks. If you're having a, a toddler or a young one who wants 
to push through, um, definitely look into getting your child into Scouts because they learn very important things like life skills. So for our August competition, to win a business exposure slot on GMNC, you better make sure that you watch the promo that's coming up next. And after the break, we're going to be speaking to the current Miss Ballet beautiful Paige Johnson who's going to be telling us about her reign and the fundamentals uh, that she actually had to go through to actually combat uh, COVID-19 and what she's up to. Uh, more on that uh, later on. A new month, new opportunities and that is exactly what we are offering on GMNC during the month of August. Get your business noticed by entering our competition to win a free interview on GMNC, putting your brand into the face of thousands of potential customers. Remember, people buy from people. What's up your name, company name and social media links to 066-232-1385 and you could be this fortunate recipient of this incredible opportunity. A winner per week will be announced live on our Friday shows starting the 6th of August and a winner each Friday for the remainder of the month. Welcome back to GMNC and as promised I have the current Miss Balito Paige Johnston here in studio with me. Hello Paige. Hello, how are you? I'm good, good and you? I'm so good, thank you. You're gorgeous girl. Thank you. You're fabulous. <laughs> That's early morning for me. <laughs> <laughs> you look splendid. So you. you were explaining to me how are you are the current uh, Miss Balito. Yes. Yeah, so explain so that. So I mm. did the pageant in 2019. Oh, okay. And I actually ended up coming second, which is called First Princess. First Princess, yes. But obviously, because of COVID last year and them not able to have a pageant, yeah. uh, the organizers called me and offered me the position. And how could I turn something like that down? Oh, you know? whoa, whoa. I'll be like, so, no, <laughs> I'm sorry, wrong number. No, you don't yes, do that. So, I took over and oh. it's been amazing. I'm sure. Yes. So for anyone who doesn't know who Paige is, tell us more about yourself. What do you like? You know, your <laughs> hobbies? 
I don't have many hobbies. <laughs> <laughs> My name's Paige. Mm. I am 23 and I'm actually from Durban North. Okay. But I saw a poster advertising Miss Belito quite okay. a few years ago and yeah. I've always been interested in it mm. and when I saw that entries opened in 2019 yeah. one of my friends had actually done it before so oh, I yeah. spoke to her about it and found out what it entails mm. and it really just sparked an interest in me. Mm. I've always been interested in giving back. During wow. school I got involved in all the charity committees mm. and when I was in varsity mm. I also was part of the student body um, under the charity committee yeah. and that always sparked me to go further and I decided to get involved with Miss Belito. Wow, that's fantastic. Yeah, so, so you've actually also loved modeling, I'm, I'm assuming, or you have you, I've, or you do something that you just, you know, said, okay, I'm going to do it. I don't think that Miss Belito is too much of modeling and yeah. pageants and you know as much as it's a pageant it's about beauty it's yeah. all about your heart and wow. you know beauty and the other aspects is all 10 percent you know yeah, of what it's what all saying. about you yeah. know yes i love being in front of the camera and photo you <laughs> know course, photography and yes. the makeup and the glamour but the main reason was just trying to give back and making a difference in the world. And I think that's what I love about the whole Miss Belito pageant is that it focuses more on the individual giving back. Yes. You know, as opposed to how you we were saying that it's, it's not about the glitz and the glamour and yes, stuff like that. Yeah, that's so an I, added bonus. Yeah, that's yeah. an added bonus. But I see, uh, speaking to you, I feel like you are also a, a community developer. You know, you, you love oh. charities and stuff. Which yes. charities have you been involved in and what was maybe your favorite charity? So this is actually my favorite topic so um, it all started I mm. heard this quote and it said just remember mm. in the winter far beneath the bitter snow yeah. lies the seed that with the Sun's love in the spring becomes a rose wow. so in life there's a lot of people that are struggling they don't have much sunshine in their life yeah. you know their life is cold and difficult but yeah. when a helping hand is extended mm. and they feel heard and supported yeah. they start to blossom wow. and this is where my charity initiative started I called it the blossom project okay it had an aim of helping people grow mm. planting a seed in people's minds mm. and making a difference wow. I wanted to help people from well everyone from adults to babies to mm. animals so I got involved in baby homes I did um, a little teddy bears picnic oh. all my sponsors from Miss Belito and uh, family friends we all just got together donated helped contributed and uh, went to the baby home did a teddy bears picnic wow. everyone donated nappies and um, teddy bears and it was a lovely afternoon of playing with the kids listening to Disney music yeah we um, went and handed out food on the beachfront in Durban. Okay. I don't know if you know, but there's quite a few people yeah. living on the beachfront there. Yeah, so. I'm, I'm from that side. Yes, yeah. yeah. So, mm. you know, that's one of our aims was to go help people there. Mm. We donated about 150 blankets wow. to um, for the dogs, for Project Dog and Pact, which mm. is Phoenix Animal Care and Treatment Center. Wow. And then along with one of my sponsors, EQ Finn, mm. we got together with Barefoot No More, okay. which is um, a charity initiative that helps school children get school shoes so they don't have to travel yeah, barefoot no more. no more. Yes. Yeah. So we did a lot of, a lot during yeah, the you've time. you've done a lot. Yes, and it was so exciting. I actually won the best charity project when I did the pageants in 2019 sense, and girl. that was, mm. it was a highlight for me because that was the, the reason that I entered. Yeah. That was my main my main focus, you wow. know, was to try and make as much of a difference as I can. So are you are you working on something now or during COVID it's been quite challenging. Yeah, it's I'm been sure quiet. I've got a list of things that I want to do, you know, mm. going into hospitals, going yeah. into retirement villages, yeah. but there's so many restrictions and you don't want to put anyone at risk, yes. including myself, mm. you know. So I've been doing things on a lot a much smaller scale. Okay. You nice. know, small contributions like the, the handing out food um, yeah. to the people on the beachfront, mm. um, just handing out food to people on my daily errands, you mm. know, in the traffic. There's so many beggars on the streets. Yeah. I'll, you know, put together a couple parcels and hand out throughout the day. It's a lot smaller than what I want to do, but yeah. as soon as, you know, everything's kind of opened up, mm. I have a lot. I'm going to continue the Blossom project and 
try to push it and make it a lot bigger than So, uh, Paige, is. what can the community of Balito do to assist you in terms of pushing through? You know, um, I know that uh, Balito, uh, uh, the Balito community likes to come together yes. when it comes to charity. I think just keeping the Zimbali Rotary Club in mind. Mm. You know, um, Miss Balito community works hand in hand with them. Yeah. So, anything they can do to contribute or donate or... Um, hand in anything towards the um, Zimbali Rotary Club, that would be a big help. You know, for, um, personally for my projects, I'm going to start putting out a lot of messages on the Belito community group. Yes, yes, yes. I, I do it normally on um, the Durban North one because obviously that's my, <laughs> yeah. that's my area, yeah, so it's yeah. a lot easier to get what I need from there. Yeah. But I'll start posting on Belito so that the community here can get a lot more involved as well. Well, Paige, thank you very much for coming thank through. You. It's actually been a pleasure, you know. Thank You're such you. an insightful and and beautiful young lady, and I hope uh, you continue to you know to grow and grow in your and your charities as well. Thank you so much. 100%. Thank you for having me. <laughs> <laughs> it was a pleasure. So uh, coming up next is uh, Haley and Dion with our weather and surf report. After this. Good morning everyone and welcome to your weather for today, brought to you by Belito Gas and Brine. Today we have a high of 22 degrees and a low of 13 degrees. The real fuel will be 22 degrees as well and the real fuel shade 19 degrees. We have a southerly wind at 28 kilometers per hour and wind gusts at 43 kilometers per hour. Dit gesê, net een waarschuwing aan elke dame in Belito vandag. As jy na prentjie 1 kyk achter my, sal jy sien dit is hoe ons dink ons lyk. En as jy na prentjie 2 kyk, sal jy sien dit is hoe ons eindelijk lyk. So moet verkieslik ook nie vandag jou sonbrille boe op jou kop sit, om die kyfie uit jou oe uit te hou nie. We have a 25% chance of showers. The sunrise will be at 6.32 a.m. and the sunset at 5.30 p.m. Next up will be your surf report brought to you by 1018 Skryfboofters and Dion Bosman from Victory Surf. See you tomorrow. Good morning Belito and welcome to Thursday morning's beach report. Wow, typical for this time of the year. Big Eastleys yesterday and massive Westleys again today. So that big buster is going to hit us around 8 o'clock this morning and it's going to blow 20 to 30 knots by this afternoon and welcome rain overnight coming this evening. So definitely no surf today unless you got in the water really really early this morning. I'm sure that we're going to be completely blown out because our coastline is quite exposed. The bog has got some nice swell coming through. It's two and a half to three meters by late afternoon. So proper swell on its way for, uh, for tomorrow. But uh, it's only going to be a kiteboard and a wing surf uh, day today. And I'm sure the guys are going to be going crazy at Tiffany's Reef again. So go and watch them. It's going to be a great show out there, but definitely no surf today. Bodyboarders, be careful. Paddleboarders, definitely a no-no. And uh, surfers, it's very lumpy, very messy, and very big wind. Be careful out there. Enjoy your Thursday. Welcome back. And I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that actually came into the show. And also, I just wanted to say a special thank you to Zinga Africa for dressing me for GMNC. Thank you viewers and guests and as a reminder to take a look at our Facebook page on details on our competition with Toka Optical Belito to win a pair of gorgeous sunnies and we are going to be having a music video by Tyler Wareham with a Life's Plan but for me it's goodbye.
your mind be filtered out by the rhythms of the things you don't know. Say what you want to say. Don't let your mind be filtered out by the other things. Wondering how and when I go, I go, I go down to the house where you would know that I never went free from your life until I see. I'm a trap fool who loved you the most, and so I go. 